to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I began to teach on the laws and the principles that govern advancement for those of you who followed the first session yesterday we began to discuss the kingdom principles responsible for progress the bible declares that it is god that advances men first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 the Bible says, and Samuel said unto the people, it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up from out of the land of Egypt. And so we know from scripture that it is God that advances men, that beyond the seeming effortless progress that men make, there is an invisible hand that pushes people to the place of destiny. And that hand will push someone tonight in the name of Jesus. I shared a few principles. Let me do a quick recap and then we'll do the business of the night and pray. Number one, the power of vision. I spoke about vision that there is no advancement for an individual and a destiny that lacks vision. The Bible says without vision, the people perish. Vision gives you direction. Vision constrains you to focus on the matters that are important vision is very powerful hallelujah in fact the bible says it this way prophet joel said when the spirit is poured upon all flesh young men will have visions visions not just supernatural encounters but they will find direction for their lives vision number two i spoke about faith the power of faith the bible says that God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent if he says it he will do it if he spoke it he will make it good hallelujah and I did define faith as the name given to the action that you take not just the confession that you make please follow carefully Liberty Church faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person it is not the confession you make it is not the desire you have to obtain results but the name given to the action that you take hallelujah very powerful i i did share with us that faith is predicated upon two supernatural qualities of god number one his integrity that the first platform upon which bible faith is built is his integrity his unbendableness his consistency his dependability the bible says god is not a man god became a man but he is not a man he became a man so that he could die for a fallen man but god is not a man he is god and remains god and then the second quality that sponsors faith is his ability. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him who is able. There are many people who are willing. They have integrity. But they do not have the ability. It takes a combination of integrity and ability to produce results. And the Bible shows us from Genesis to Revelation that God has both ability and integrity. And I told us that faith is not just having the knowledge of your expected end, the results that you desire, but that 
Faith must bring you to a point where you understand the requisite spiritual principles that connect to the results that you desire. You are not walking in faith if it is absolutely up to God. There is always a participatory role that man has to play. So on one hand, we know through scripture the promises that are allocated and then we find out through the ministry of the word and the spirit the spiritual principles that connect us connect our desires and their manifestation faith that's the second principle that is required for advancement you cannot shift from your current position to a new dimension in the spirit without faith hallelujah number three very quickly let me just talk on two more number three the power of value write it down please value the third key that advances men is value and productivity value and productivity what is value value is a measure of your usefulness value is a measure of your usefulness it is important many believers all across the world desire to rise to their prophetic position in destiny but they place little value on productivity we have lots of believers who pray and that is profitable we have lots of believers who fast and that is profitable we have lots of believers who study scripture that is profitable but very few believers understand that it is the gift of a man that makes room for him the bible declares and that it can bring him before great men proverbs 18 and verse 16 the word gift there means the value of a man in other words there is no space for you anywhere by default it is your gift that makes room for you very powerful we live in a world that is plagued by prejudices we live in a world that is plagued by all kinds of sentiments and biases it will take your value exceptionally so to stand you out and to give you a place in this life value is very powerful what is productivity productivity is value that has been refined transformed into products and services that are needed and useful that's what it means to be productive you are not productive just because you have something to offer you are not productive just because you like what you have you are, you are not even productive just because you have packaged your value. It is important that your value be needed and useful within the context of a civilization. I give you an instance. If I am a professional typist who is an exceptional person using the typewriter, my value may have little demand or no demand as far as our current civilization is concerned. Now, I am valuable, but my value is not needed and not useful. There are too many alternatives for that kind of value. And that means that I may not live a rewarded life. I may live a life full of a consolation that I am not lazy. But as far as the reward that advances men is concerned, there may not be any place for me. Value is important. As a man of God, you need to be valuable valuable in the exegesis of scripture a thorough understanding of the ways of god you must be full of the holy ghost you cannot be a blessing if you are not valuable the table of greatness was so designed such that you have to bring your value before you are given a seat there you're not going to come and desire to sit at the table of greatness with out bringing a constructive value the bible says joseph remained in the dungeon but when there was need for his value it says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon you must make up your mind to be valuable very 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 powerful the bible says in mark chapter 1 mark chapter 1 let's begin our reading from verse 35 this is jesus now mark chapter 1 35 haven't healed the sick and done many miraculous and wonderful things the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there he prayed verse 36 he was so valuable 
that he had to sneak to go and spend time with the father. And 36, the Bible says, And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. This is always the destiny of a valuable person. You know you are valuable to the degree to which there is a demand upon your grace. A demand upon your grace. The Bible says that they followed after him. Verse 37, may it be a prophecy for someone. It says, and when they had found him, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. All men, kiata, seek for thee. You've heard me say it. That there are things when you carry only those from your geographic location will look for you there are things when you carry only the poor will look for you there are things when you carry only the wealthy will look for you there are things when you carry only elites will look for you but there are things when you carry all men will seek for you all men and your reward is connected to your value there are business people who are average. There are pastors who are average. There are career people who are average. There are for thee. Many years ago when I found this scripture, I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, I would be so valuable not for some carnal self, but so that I can have an exalted platform to be able to communicate Jesus. The reward for value is influence. The, the reward for value is, I mean, you cannot begin to quantify all of the rewards that come, but I, I believe one of the highest rewards for value is influence. No one will follow someone's not communicating something that is worth the while. Are we blessed? Value is very powerful. Make up your mind that you will refine your gift. Make up your mind that you will insist until you rise to the zenith of your profession, of your ministry. And value is divided into two. Number one is virtue. And number two, your transactable skill. There are many people who have skill but lack the requisite level of character that sustains that gift. A gifted man who is an angry man is not an asset because your anger will sabotage the rewards that your being gifted should bring. So you need a balance of virtue and value. Are we together? Very quickly, the fourth key that is responsible for the advancement of men in this kingdom is a key that has ministered to me so personally. Is the key, a key that I so jealously guard. A revelation that changed my life is called the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers hmm. the irrefutable ministry the last time i was with you liberty church in london i shared a bit about destiny helpers and i just want to buttress on it again that it takes a synergy of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of men for men to rise. The formula is this, the spirit and the bride say come. The spirit alone cannot make the word flesh. The bride alone cannot make the word flesh. It is always the spirit and the bride. So if the spirit says be healed, there must be a bride on earth that agrees with the spirit to say be healed for that word to come. If the spirit says be lifted, there must be a bride on earth to say be lifted for lifting to happen. We have this narrative that men are not useful and sometimes even as preachers we make that mistake. We downplay the ministry of men. 
if you say men are not useful as contrasting them to the power and the sovereignty of God, then you are right. But if you say men are not useful as far as the dynamics of advancement and excellence is concerned, you are very wrong. Forever, O oh Lord, the Bible says, thy word is settled in heaven, not on earth. It takes a synergy of the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of men for the word to be settled in our lives. I wish I had time to show you scripture after scripture where men interrupted the program of God. God intended the first man to interrupt the program of God was Adam himself. Man has that level of power to interrupt the program of God. As mighty as God is, as powerful as God is, man's disobedience, he used his will and interrupted God's program. And God respected his will. Please do not downplay men. The narrative that men are not useful. If God wants to bless me, all I need is God. It's a very, very comforting scripture, but it's destructive. It's a destructive statement. You need men. This is the world of men. To the point that God had to become a man. The angel came to ask for permission. The Bible says a virgin shall conceive. The Bible never said her name would be Mary. So the spirit of God kept hovering around the earth. Looking for which virgin will yield her womb. For that prophecy to come to pass. When he came to Mary. Mary said be it unto me. If Mary refused, the Holy Ghost would continue his search until he would find another virgin who would afford her womb to bring Jesus. Men are important. Unbelievers understand this, but believers downplay the ministry of men to our detriment. As powerful as the gospel is, it takes a man to get it to the unsaved. Men are very important. So important that not even an encounter with Jesus will replace the ministry of men. Paul, as Saul, on his way to Damascus, when he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, you would think that after an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, he would not need any man again. It was the Spirit of God that referred him to go to Ananias so that the ministry would continue there. You need men. You need men. Let me drum it in the name of Jesus. Liberty Church, Europe, and the entire globe. You need the ministry of men. In fact, the ministry of men is the highest confirmation that the favor of God is upon you. The real proof of favor is not money. The real proof of favor is the loyalty of men. When God gives you men, you truly are favored. The Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor, not the multitude of resources. I learned this and it changed my life. Destiny help us. Who are they? Destiny help us are men and women anointed, appointed and sent to participate in your lifting, in your rising, in your exaltation men and women anointed men and women sent very very powerful let's look at two scriptures the bible says in the book of mark give us mark chapter 2 very interesting narrative mark chapter 2 from verse 1 watch this the bible says and again jesus now he entered into capernaum after some days and it was noised abroad that he was in the house so news went everywhere follow this scripture carefully the bible says and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them Next verse. Watch this now. The Bible says, And they came unto him, certain men, bringing one who was sick of palsy, which was born of four. Verse 4. And when they could not come nigh unto him. Now watch this. This was a man who was paralyzed. 
he knew that Jesus was available he knew the healing power of Jesus was there but there was no man to help him finally the favor of God came on him and he found certain men watch this the Bible says they were trying to press for the crowd this is the thing about destiny helpers they never stop until prophecy manifests in your life destiny helpers are not just mere supporters of your life they have been instructed by God they have been anointed to stay until the word of God comes through in your life when they could not come nigh to him for the press they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay now you would think that Jesus did not want to heal that man you would think Jesus did not want to lift that man that man would have remained like that all through the earth work of Jesus but for the ministry of men they carried him and said today you must walk we know someone who has the power we will pay the price do you know what it means to uncover someone's roof imagine the court cases they after that crusade and they defied it they said whatever we will go through let us go through it but you must be lifted let me speak over someone in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God in this season I call forth the helpers of your destiny men and women anointed commission sent to you to lift your hands until the glory of the Lord rises upon your life in experience in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the spirit of the Lord is blessing you right now Liberty Church but it took a man your pastor Dr. Shola it took his yieldedness and his alignment for these to happen men are important listen to me this is the world of men the Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord but the earth has he given to the sons of men I believe in the ministry of men Jesus is on his way to Golgotha and prophecy says he should die on a tree I hope you realize that if Jesus died on the ground there would be no salvation for men because the law is that he had to become a cause and the only way he would become a cause is that he hangs on a tree not on the ground Jesus was weak bleeding all over from the whips and the Bible tells us that he fell to the ground had no energy to carry the cross and a man came called Simon the nigger he came and helped Jesus to carry that cross and made salvation possible that body was hanging on the tree dead and yet there was no man to bring him from that cross it took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea to use his influence and his virgin tomb if Jesus were not buried in a grave we could we cannot say today oh grave where is your victory oh death where is your sting it took a man to donate his grave and use his influence to bring the body of the king of kings from the cross have you downplayed men in your life in a bid to show spirituality have you ignored the ministry of men all blessings you hear me say come from God through men to men write it down all blessings come from God through men to men there is nothing that comes from God directly to man if it looks like it came directly from God I tell you there was an intercessor somewhere that you may not see all blessings come from God through men to men all tragedies come from Satan through men to men so whether it is negative or positive men will always play a role I believe in the ministry of men my life has changed because I have been given the grace to discern now very quickly give me two minutes let me walk you through I know it's a miracle service we're about to pray but give me two minutes and let me walk you through the four categories of destiny helpers we may not have the time to go through scriptures forgive me I'm sure that another time we would be able to deal with that but there are four categories of destiny helpers that must show up in your life number one 
they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors do not have the ability to solve your problem, but they know who has that power to solve your problem. An example, we find that in 2 Kings chapter 5. Just write it for reference. The Bible talks about Naaman, who was the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in war, but he was leprous. And then one time they caught a slave girl and the slave girl ministered to his wife. And one day she looked at him and said, Oh, my dear boss, if you would hearken to me, there is a prophet I know who will cure you of this leprosy. Cut the long story short, from the ministry of that little girl, Naaman was healed from his leprosy. Divine connectors. The key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment because usually they will come in a form that is not receivable. They may be children. They may be unintelligent people. It may be your house help. It may be someone who every day talks like an unwise person except that for that day the spirit of God was upon that person. It takes discernment to receive from divine connectors. Number two, very quickly, the second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. There are times you don't need divine connectors. You need the men who have the substance, the access, the track record and the endorsement. Men of influence are very powerful. Why are they powerful? They have the resources. They have the credibility. They have paid the price. The city has opened up to them. One man of influence can give a recommendation, an endorsement about your life, your ministry, your business, and up you go, never to return again. It was the king that sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. And in a moment, he became a prime minister. Let me tell you this, in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. A man falls in love with a village girl called Hadassah and she becomes queen almost immediately. A man looks at a woman called Vashti and rejects her and she's banished from the palace never to be mentioned again. Men are very important. It took the influence of Joseph of Arimathea to bring down the body of Jesus. You need to pray for men of influence. Pastors, we live in very trying times. We need men of influence. We need men who have influence in security. Men who have influence in, in the ministry of justice. Men who have influence at strategic governmental positions. Who can stand and help us fulfill this call. It takes more than an anointing. You need men of influence. Hallelujah. Number three. The third category of destiny helpers that we need, they are called gifted people. Sometimes you just need skilled people to be part of your team and then you find out that you excel effortlessly. Gifted people. Some of the top corporations around the world, they do not have a very huge staff structure, but they have exceptional people and they produce unbelievable results. You must pray that God send me gifted people. Send me gifted people, skilled people in my life. Number four, very quickly. The last set of destiny helpers that everyone would need, must need in his life. They are called burden bearers. These ones are not there to help you move forward. They are there to stop you from going backward. Burden bearers. You do not just need people who move you forward alone. You need people who can stop you from going backward. Because there are times that the journey to destiny can be so hard. You need Joseph of Arimathea. You need roots who will tell Naomi, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. They are not looking for your gifts. Divine connectors are not even interested in the anointing. You are the object of their passion. Not your gift, not your skill. Not what you can do or what you cannot do. They are not people who will stand with you. They are those who will die with you. Those are divine connectors. Let me tell you this. Woe betides any leader and woe betides any man that cannot have destiny helpers called divine, called burden bearers in your life. A time came when David was running away from Saul because Saul was in desperate pursuit to kill him. And the Bible says certain men came to him in the cave of Adullam. 
they saw a man hiding and yet they covenanted with themselves that our assignment is to take this fear from your life and insist that you become a king till you rule over us why would you want a timid young boy to rule over you that's what happens when you find burden bearers they will stand by you stand for you they will stand with you they will cry with you they will laugh with you they will die with you i will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart i will lift my voice to you in worship and i will worship with all my heart i will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart i will lift my voice to you in worship and i will worship with all my heart Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray. Lord, send destiny helpers to my life. Please pray. Send the helpers of destiny. Send them to my ministry. Divine connectors connecting me to my helpers. Men of influence using their credibility and their endorsements to lift me. Gifted people making things happen in my life and then burden bearers giving me the support that i need to continue send them oh god to my life go ahead and pray hallelujah one more and then we'll pray very quickly this will be the last key The last key that is responsible for the advancement of men and women in this kingdom is called the prophetic. The prophetic advantage. Hmm. The prophetic advantage. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. The Bible says, and by a prophet, it was the Lord that brought Israel, but he used a prophet and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved the prophetic has been largely abused especially in our modern day context of charismatic and Pentecostal Christianity we've had all kinds of excesses that surround the prophetic however it would be an error and grave neglect to ignore the ministry of the prophetic in actualizing destiny the prophetic has always played a role in the lifting the mysterious lifting of men and women i am a product of prophecy this ministry is a product of prophecy the liberty church is a product of prophecy your pastor among many factors is a product of prophecy Jesus he's coming to the earth he's excelling in his earth work the completion of his assignment was prophecy dependent when Jesus was born before he was taken anywhere he was taken to the temple and he met two prophets one called Simeon the prophet the other called Anna the prophetess he had to encounter these prophets then before his ministry would start he met this strange prophet called John the Baptist who baptized him and announced him. You need the prophetic in your life. There has to be the speaking of a prophet sent. Now watch this. Let me tell you how the prophetic works. Prophets, just like apostles, are sent to you. Just because a prophetic anointing is available does not mean it can bless you or respond to your situation there are words that are sent when he sends forth his word it can heal it can deliver it can bring breakthrough the bible says there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent
can you imagine this this is elijah on his way to the widow's house and he met other widows how are Saul was searching for his father's donkey and he searched and searched and searched and could not find it and then they made up their mind to go to the prophet of God called Samuel amazing what happened when they met Samuel as soon as they had a face-to-face -face encounter the donkey started going back home there was no mention that help. look the prophetic is powerful it can cheapen a challenge of decades in a moment the prophetic when administered within the jurisdiction of balance and scripture it can work wonders a life can change overnight and someone's life is about to change this night because I'm going to be speaking over your life there are two dimensions to the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic and the goal is to build your faith to give you insight about happenings past present and future so if I prophesy and I begin to call names, for instance, and call conditions, you see, those are dimensions that they are revelatory dimensions of the prophetic. But the most superior dimension of the prophetic is called the creative dimension of the prophetic. It doesn't just inform you about what is there that you do not know. It makes what has no business happening to happen. An example of the creative dimension of the prophetic is found in second kings when you read chapter six but for time's sake let's start with seven second kings seven this was a famine in samaria and the bible says it was so great that women began to eat their children and when the king heard about it he tore his clothes he was sad and then elisha said hear ye the word of the lord Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flying fowl be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Watch this. This is These are a people who do not even have food, eating their children. All of a sudden a prophet shows up and says, by this time tomorrow. He was not giving them advanced knowledge of what will happen. It was the word he said that created that possibility. There are times I can tell you, okay, there is your car is outside. That's revelation. I didn't create the car. Whether I prophesied it or not, the car was there anyway. But I can look at you and say, go back home and meet favor waiting for you. Favor had no business waiting for you. But you see, when the creative dimension of the prophetic is released, the dynamics is that the spirit of wisdom begins to hover around a territory, searching for the human actors that must make that word come to pass. This is how the prophetic works. That means someone who is sitting and watching now, that means someone who is following in your home, that in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, something that was a challenge, all of a sudden is rolled away by the power of the prophetic. Mm. I will go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. I won't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. Prophet Elisha was mentoring a group of people and the Bible says they told him where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. And while they were felling the woods that they would use to build a place of lecture the bible says an axe head fell and someone cried immediately he said alas master for it was borrowed elisha came and said there's no cause for concern he threw a stick and the axe head floated when it is time to receive the prophetic word please receive with all your heart don't sit wondering can god make a way in the wilderness uh-uh 
he upholds all things by the power of his word let me tell you prophecy is powerful the way it works is that it will keep hovering around that territory until it finds human vessels that can partner with the divine to make that word come to pass i am a product of prophecy i remember you may have heard me say it but years ago i went to buy something just living my life very simple life and then I saw two women who were trying to make their purchases and all of that and then I told them I said please would you are my mothers would you allow me to pay for you it was not much I'm not sure in it, it, it would not be more than more than one pound in fact it was less than one pound or one euro and I said let me pay and I paid and they began to bless me. You know how mothers bless when they are touched. They began to bless me, bless me. And for some reason, I didn't pay attention to what they were saying. But one of them spoke to me and said, My son, forever walk upon gold. I'm a product of prophecy. Your life can change overnight when a sent word comes to you. We're about to pray. I have to stop here. I'm going to be ministering to the sick. I believe in the healing power of Jesus. I'm going to be ministering deliverance to the oppressed. And then I'm going to speak and prophesy from the depth of my heart over the Liberty Church, over your lives. And I'm truly honored by the way. Pastor, thank you for the honor that you have for me. Thank you so much. Um, I heard your your compliments before I came on air and I was just broken listening to you I appreciate the grace and I appreciate the warm gesture and the discernment it's an honor to be a carrier of this unique grace that God has given to bless nations and I only pray that people will have the discernment to believe and to receive hallelujah now I will just share one scripture and then we'll begin to pray. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 16. The Bible says, And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all they that were sick. When it was evening, Jesus did not just teach the word. The Bible says in that crusade ground, in that conference, there were people who were under all kinds of yokes of darkness. There were people who were plagued by all kinds of infirmity. And the Bible says he cast out the devils with his word and he healed them. I believe in the ministry of Jesus. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 1. Then we go to verse 8. The Bible says, when he had called unto him the twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. And then let's go to verse 7. Let's start from 7. Now he sent them, he said, and as ye go, Joshua Selman, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand and demonstrate the reality of that kingdom by number one healing the sick number two cleansing the lepers three raising the dead number four casting out devils he said you have received freely so give freely the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 this was a prophetic word theologically speaking that was a reflection of what jesus would come to do but now because we have been grafted into Christ, that assignment is also our assignment. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2, the Bible says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3, to give them beauty for ashes. 
the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The Bible says they shall build the old ways, they shall raise the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Read on. Strangers, by reason of that anointing, shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. It says, but ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. And men shall call you ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, the Bible says. And in their glory shall you boast yourselves. Seven for your shame hallelujah liberty church god is speaking to someone for your shame you shall receive double it says and for confusion they that rejoice in their portion therefore in their land they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them verse 8 for i the lord love judgment and hate robbery and so on and so forth but then we stop there the messianic prophecy all of the great things that god is going to be doing even by the Spirit of God. Are you ready to receive? You have to receive, number one, by faith. And you have to receive discerning that God is able to use men to bless men. I've taught you this. We're about to pray. And then I'll minister to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a miracle service. I believe that someone is going to be healed. I believe that someone is going to be delivered. I believe with all my heart that someone has come to an end of seasons of pain, captivity, delayed disappointment, all by the Spirit of God. Lift your voice, lift your hands, begin to pray and ask the Lord to give you a visitation that truly shifts you by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Emmanuel. Liberty Church, Europe, are you praying? Emmanuel. Sheila Paruski Adabalatusi. Your name is called. Emmanuel 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 Your name is called Ask the Lord to give you a visitation. Mention every area that must shift in your life. Father, my finances, my spiritual life. Take God seriously tonight. Liberty Church, London, England, Europe, Africa, America, Asia, everywhere you're connecting from. Lift your voice and pray. Ask the Lord for a visitation. His anointing is in this place. His power is in this place. His word is in this place. And he's about to do a quick work. And I believe that someone watching me, there is an impartation that is going to come upon you. There will be an activation of the gifts of the spirit. There will be an activation of superior dimensions. You may be a man of God watching with open heart, watching, ready to receive. God is ready to pour his spirit, his grace upon your life and set you on fire. Keep praying. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Shena paka sola branda gadosiata. Jeles kabrinde gedibarasiata. You are a mighty God. Are you praying? My 
majesty keep praying your majesty your grace has found me just as I am empty handed but alive in your hands majesty your majesty are you praying in the spirit forever i am changed by your love in the presence of your majesty 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 your grace has found me just as i am empty handed but alive in your hands majesty majesty forever i am changed by your love the presence of your majesty you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you in advance you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you so in my life be glorified be glorified in my life be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor Lay your hands everywhere you are trusting God for a miracle, a healing miracle. The healing power of Jesus is strong in this place. Liberty Church, lay your hands right now. Everywhere you are trusting God for a miracle, all across the globe, go ahead. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. I want to pray with you. I tell you, I sense a very strong meeting. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a woman. Your name is Susan. You stay in London. You're in central London. Susan. This is what I'm seeing. And the power of God is touching you right now. I think you have something to do with it. It's, 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 I don't know if it's a growth in your body. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, I declare be healed right now. By the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now I rebuke the spirit of infirmity I rebuke the spirit of infirmity every devil responsible for sickness the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he declares that he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed of the devil. in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit be healed right now be healed right now let the power of god move through the airwaves 
to London, England, Europe, America, Asia, Africa, Nigeria. In the name of Jesus, let the healing power of Jesus flow right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I command every blood condition. There's such an anointing, such an anointing. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Blood conditions be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Migraines be healed. Peptic ulcer be healed. Malignant growths disappear right now. In the name of Jesus, fibroids, tumors. In the name of Jesus, I come against cancer. In the name of Jesus, any and all kinds of cancers, you are judged right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith rise up in your soul. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He will touch you and make you whole. Rise and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Let faith rise up in your soul. Rise and be changed in the name of Jesus. He will touch you and make you whole. The Lord is healing. I've seen a number of people. The Lord is healing you from lumps, lumps around the breast area. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that devil right now. I rebuke that devil be healed. The Lord is showing me a woman. You are a middle-aged woman. I'm sure maybe mid-40s into the mid-50s. This is what I'm seeing. And you are, you are watching from your room. You are watching from a room. You are lying on your bed. I'm seeing that you have a challenge with your back. The Spirit of the Lord is ministering to me. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. The Lord is showing me a gentleman. Your name is Jeff. J E W F. You are watching from the US. Jeff, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that your marriage will not break up. You're having a marital problem. It's a very serious problem and it looks like um, it's, it's leading to a divorce. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is coming through for you right now. Make sure you are praying. Receive. Receive by faith. Receive by faith. I rebuke infirmity. I declare be healed. All kinds of bone conditions be healed. You're on a wheelchair, you're holding a crutch, you're having any kind of problem with your lumbar vertebra in the name of Jesus, be healed. I stretch my hands and I declare, be healed by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. Eye conditions, be healed in the name of Jesus. Ear conditions, be healed in the name of Jesus. Blood conditions, we change genotypes in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing people. The Lord is healing people. Begin to send in your praise reports right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A miracle is happening right now. Miracles are happening. In the name of Jesus. There's someone you have a very severe abdominal pain. Very sharp abdominal pain. But in the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost is touching you right now. Touching you right now. Touching you right now. There's someone you have an issue with your truth. It's even affecting your, uh, you know, the, the sound, your speech. It's, it's like there is an unusual huskiness. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the anointing of the Holy Ghost touch you right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I've got a message from the Lord, hallelujah. 
he just played it and it just came to my spirit that you look and then you leave very powerful song just firing up my spirit now look and leave my brother leave look to Jesus Christ and leave I got a message from the Lord hallelujah there's a woman your name is Rhoda there's a woman your name is Rhoda you are a Nigerian but you live in London in the name of Jesus the power of God is touching you you have negative cycles negative cycles dreams wrong dreams that continue to program woes around your life in the name of Jesus be delivered now I want to minister the deliverance power of the Holy Spirit the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare over every life every pastor every businessman every career person or every family every territory that is under the yoke and the influence of darkness the bible declares for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he might destroy the works of the evil one in the name of jesus be delivered right now i cast out those devils be gone in the name of jesus from their lives from their families spirits of delay spirits of retrogression i come against you in the name of jesus by the power of the holy ghost every force that stands your way to advance every spirit that recycles wrong seasons in your life i come against it in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead be delivered right now be delivered right now satan we put a sanction upon your hands thus far have you come and no further shall you go in the name of jesus be delivered be set free be delivered be set free from the bondage of prayerlessness be delivered the bondage of delay in the name of jesus listen listen to me very carefully there are people who never excel financially you are diligent you have access to resources and mysterious things happen until it brings you down in the name of Jesus I declare that the spirit that is back of these circles of hardship and failure and retrogression the recycling of negative season and patterns I come against you be broken in the name of Jesus be broken my Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross I decree and declare that every legal access the devil has over your life over your family your spiritual life your finances over your destiny I, I break that legal access in the name of Jesus for it is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered in the name of Jesus Jesus be delivered in the name of Jesus be delivered in the name of Jesus be delivered Paul said I desire to come to you once and again but Satan hindered us I decree and declare by the spirit of grace every hindrance standing your way every mountain standing your way Liberty Church London England the entire Europe and every other part of the world connecting in the name of Jesus I clear that obstacle who are thou mountain before the Liberty Church who are thou mountain before the saints of God who are thou mountain before London who are thou mountain all over Europe I declare be lifted and casted into the sea in the name of Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 12 the Bible says how that Peter was bound hand and feet 
but prayers were offered and an angel came and opened the gates I declare the opening of the gates the opening of the gates gates of delay I declare the opening of the gates gates of retrogression I declare the opening of the gates gates of stagnation I come with a prophetic word be open a father open tether and heather in the name of Jesus Christ I hear the chains falling hey, I hear the chains falling over your life over your finances I hear the chains falling I hear the chains falling falling now listen to me many of you have lost money many of you have lost properties I know that the last one year has been a challenge for the entire globe and Europe I'm aware London that your activities are hardly returned to normalcy because of the pandemic let me tell you this there is a prophetic solution to the ills that plague men the Bible says the things that are are the things that were there is nothing that is new under the face of the earth i want to prophesy restoration for someone the bible says they are taken for a prey some of you have lost money companies have folded some of you have been downsized hear me the prophetic has always been the tool for restoration in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands to as many who desire restoration i decree and declare be restored right now be restored in the name of jesus be restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Financial restoration. Marital restoration. Career restoration. Restoration of fire and passion for spiritual things. Restoration of zeal in the name of Jesus. Receive restoration. Receive restoration. Receive restoration. Receive restoration in the name of Jesus. We're wrapping up. I want to pray specifically for ministers of the gospel around London, around Europe especially, and for as many who are connecting. We live in very challenging times. Ministers have lost their membership to the pandemic. They have lost the zeal, the hope. And for many, you're about quitting ministry let me speak to you hear the word of the Lord there is always hope for a tree even if it be cut off the Bible says at the sound of water I'm speaking to someone I believe that there is a man of God who is watching right now and you're saying apostle you do not understand my situation I'm about giving up but I bring you by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bring you the ministry of the Spirit. I'm about to pray that the fire will fall again afresh. I'm about to pray that your zeal for ministry will be reignited again. I'm about to pray that the ministry of the Holy Spirit will be real in your life. I want to pray that that grace you've so coveted. There are many of you who are watching and you are saying there are dimensions that I desire. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your life man of God receive a, a reignition I speak to you do not give up on ministry you have prayed and prayed I'm not seeing signs and wonders I impart grace upon you go back to your congregation 
go back to your word study go back to your prayer altar I open you up to realms of the prophetic realms of visions realms of dreams prophetic experiences I open you up to the ministry of the spirit of revelation the eyes that see and the ears that hear in the name of Jesus comprehension of the truth and the principles of scripture I decree and declare receive it by the power of the Holy Spirit fresh fire upon your passion do not give up in the name of Jesus the Spirit of God quickens you the grace for revival let it fall upon you fall upon your congregation Liberty Church I prophesy an outpouring from the youth the eldership let there be such a move of the Spirit in the name of Jesus as a church as a congregation I shift you by prophecy step into new seasons of influence in the name of Jesus I pray for the pastorate I pray for the ordained workers in the name of Jesus experience the Spirit of God in a new dimension I multiply your visibility across London across Europe in the name of Jesus that every force that fights you human or demonic goes down immediately in the name of Jesus your voice will never be silenced in the name of Jesus I pray captains of industry connected to this ministry excel go forward in the name of Jesus career people go forward in the name of Jesus business people go forward supernatural ideas strategies from the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ families go forward in the name of Jesus Christ now listen we're about to wrap up but I cannot end this session this is my final session and I also believe that this wraps up the conference we cannot end without giving an opportunity there has to be someone listening to me who needs Jesus there has to be someone the global harvest is a mandate for all more than receiving material things more than receiving supernatural gifts it is a passion and a desire in the father's heart that all men be saved i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back i have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back, no turning back. You're following online. You are the church. You're in your office. You're in your home. You're watching through your device. And the Spirit of the Lord is convicting you. And He's telling you, it's time to come. Do not run away from Him. The prodigal son said, How many hired servants? does my father have and I am here feeding with the swine he said I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son but when the father saw him from far he came and embraced him this is the God that we serve he's a God of love he's a God of mercy I want to lead you to pray this prayer I like you to pray it loud from the depth of your heart meaning Jesus is with you there Europe hear me I know that it looks like Christianity is plunging downwards but I believe with all my heart that no matter how civilized we become Jesus remains the solution I'm about to pray Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer London 
for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way one more time my Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer for the world today above it there's no other Jesus is the way say after me everyone who is trusting to receive this gift say Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus let it be from the depth of your heart tonight I believe that you are the son of the living God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for me I believe that you resurrected for my justification tonight I make Jesus Savior I make Jesus Lord of my life I receive the life of God into my spirit and I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness I declare that by it I reign in life from today and forever I am a child of God born again saved redeemed by the blood of the Lamb from today and forever I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father I commend these ones who made this decision I commend them to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit teach them guide them lift them honor them exalt them I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that as a result of this conference they would find life they would find hope they would find peace and that one day as we all gather before your feet they will join to sing that song I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you came I am so glad you preached. Pastor Shola, this is what they will tell you. I am so glad you came. They will thank you for the Liberty Church. They will thank you for the sacrifice of obedience to be a seasoned servant of God over London. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.